What's going on YouTube? My name is Joshua Wade and as you can tell by this screen, I just want to jump right into the tutorial to save you and me a lot of time and just get to the meat and potatoes, so to speak. So I've got this session set up basically just assuming that you guys are at or girls are at the point to where you have MIDI drums. This is a basic drum beat that I just grabbed from search so you guys can kind of hear what I'm doing. Okay, so run of the mill basic beat. First step, go to mixer. And then the next step would be ignore that because there's another step that I want you to take first. Well, I would like you to, but it's up to you. Make a backup of your MIDI. Um, you don't need to, but the final step in this tutorial is destructive to MIDI. It will delete your MIDI data. So just right click, add instrument track, copy, paste. You know, it's not going to hurt anything. You don't have to do anything. Don't select any inputs, outputs, no virtual instruments. And then just go over here to track list, uncheck it, hide it out of sight, out of mind. But you have that peace of mind that your, your MIDI is backed up. Assuming this is something that's like, you know, three minutes worth of drum MIDI and you've spent hours on. Um, so after that, then go to mixer. And the first thing that I do, the mixer view that I choose is not the basic. So I'll click this, I'll go over to modern, and then I'll click original mix. The first thing you'll notice is the little modules or whatever these are called down here change. Uh, these are your mic blend settings and you'll also notice you have kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom now. This is a more traditional way that someone would mic up a drum set in a studio. Um, Personally, me in the studio, this is how I mic up a drum set, but I very rarely use the kick out or the snare bottom. Very rarely, I say that, but it just depends on the project and what, what kind of sound the drummer was looking for. The next step that I personally do is I only keep the ambient and the overheads. These other ones, I basically bring them all the way down and mute them just for uh, peace of mind. For myself, I don't like bleed through, uncontrolled bleed through, so I kick these down all the way. And uh, last but not least, you guys probably already know this one, but stick with me because I'm going to show you how to make the best out of the multi-channel settings. So just go to multi-channel. You're going to have to change a few things right out of the gate. Um, what it's doing is PreSonus is picking up that your kick drum uh, is on a stereo track, so which is fine. So we're just going to change these numerically. Okay, so the toms are on stereo, that's fine. The overheads are on stereo, that's fine because the, technically these are going to be two microphones or three microphones, however many toms you have. The overheads will be two left and right, and then the ambient mics will be two left and right. Um, so now that we've got those set up, if I were to hit play, you would only hear the kick because the kick in, it defaults to the first track. So now if I were to open my mix view, you wouldn't see that it's changed at all. <laughs> so the easiest way, I'll show you the easiest way to get your other tracks. Just click this little outputs arrow and we only need eight. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now when I play this back, And you can see all of your drums here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cut scene to where I'm going to have these renamed and colored. So that way um, I don't have to waste your time naming them. All right, so we have jumped ahead in time and everything is colored blue and everything is named. So the next step, let me get my bearings here. We've got our mixer set up. I'm just double checking everything. Okay, everything's looking good. Now I can close out of Easy Drummer. And for those of you like, oh, he's gonna right click and just go to transform to audio track. You're absolutely right. But there are a couple things that I wanna go over before I even touch this list. And again, stick with me. You're gonna hear me say that a lot because I know I like to just jump ahead and then wonder what the hell happened and why is it not working the way I want it to. So this is one MIDI, one MIDI uh, take, right? One big clip. If you're like me, you're writing MIDI parts like this. You're doing them in sections. Well, not that one because that, that's like a 16th. So we'll just, yeah. 
you're writing them in sections. So if you have multiple sections of different MIDI parts, if you try to export this, one, the one thing that's gonna happen is this. Okay, so that snare had, had a tail, it had decay on it, right? Uh, sustain. Like a normal drum set in a room would have. If I were to bounce this out the way that it is, I'll show you. That, that is not set to default. It's jumping ahead of me. I'm going to call this section the corks of editing with MIDI. Um, so, <laughs> and here's why. Okay, so let's see if we hear any weird things happen. Okay, nothing weird there, but if I go to the end, no room reverb, no, uh, no sustain, no decay, no nothing. So that's unnatural. So what I want to do is I'm going to hit Control Z, let my computer uh, hesitate. Whenever you have multiple MIDI parts like this, just hold your shift key down, select all of these, right click, and then hit G or merge events. And you're gonna find that right here in the events tab, and then just merge events. So the reason that this is on here, whenever you hit transform to audio, auto tail, 30 seconds. So that's awesome. That will give you that decay that you want, that sustain, like a traditional drum set mic'd up in a room would. But the problem is, whenever you have that selected, if you were to have those cuts in here, it would add a 30 second tail to every single clip. And it would really confuse you, especially if you have you know, 20, 30, 40 edits. That's really gonna confuse a lot of things. The number one way that I do this, and it works the best for me every single time, once I have merged all of my clips, all of my mini clips, just grab this and stretch it out where you, how you want it to sustain for however long you want it to sustain because they're drums, you can take it to 11, <laughs> 11. Right click, do the same thing, transform to audio track. I will not touch auto tail because this thing has done nothing but cause problems for me in my life. And render all channels, yes, render inserts. I don't put any inserts on mine because I like to put inserts like reverbs, EQs, things like that, compressors after the fact. Preserve instrument track state, yes, that's fine. Remove instrument, absolutely, it's gonna save me some CPU. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit okay. Then let my computer hesitate, okay. So if we go back to the beginning. Okay, so everything's good. Let's shrink these down a bit. Yeah, everything's great. Um, here is one caveat of mine, if that's even the right word. I don't know, I'm just throwing words to see if they stick. One thing that bothers me is my kick in should not be stereo, my kick out should not be stereo. And also, these are all named kick in, kick in, kick in, kick in, right? I don't want that, I want them, why did I name the tracks if it's just gonna be called kick in? So here's the next step I was telling you. This is the part that's destructive to MIDI. So it's good that we have this little backup right here because what I'm about to do, you can't undo it. So kick in, I want that to be mono. Just select this right here, channel mode, mono. Kick out, mono. Snare top, mono. Snare bottom, mono. Hi-hat, obviously, so on and so forth. Any mono tracks you, that you want to be mono, click those. And no, that's not the last step. For those of you who are thinking, well, yeah, I already know that. Here's the cool part. Highlight, right click, and then bounce selection or control B. Ta-da! Now everything's named, kick in, kick out. Uh, snare top, snare bottom, so on and so forth. The MIDI parts are gone, if you will notice. That is why I said make a backup. If you didn't, that's that's on you. <laughs> if that's how you want to roll, you want to roll that way, that's up to you. But here is all of the stems. Now you can export this if you want to, or you can save the session. And you can take this to any studio. They'll be able to pull it up. 
these are stereo tracks and if there were toms on that loop that i selected the toms would be here so if that that's it and you guys can control it like regular audio because it well it is regular audio <laughs> and then you've got that that sustain that I was telling you about. Just keep this in mind for any virtual instrument that you're using like this. This will work with any virtual instrument that has multiple outs. The way that you wanna edit MIDI, the only thing that you have to really keep in mind is this right here. If you really want that natural sustain, you kinda of have to think ahead of the curve a little bit. But that's it, I mean, th there's the room, overheads, everything's here, everything's named. If this uh, video helped you guys out at all, I apologize that it was so long, but it was a lot more in depth than I intended it to be. Uh, if this helped you out, continued support is greatly appreciated. Just hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. It helps me out big time as a content creator and uh, kind of lets YouTube know that you guys enjoyed uh, what I'm trying to do here. So <laughs> uh, appreciate you hanging out for this long and I will see you guys in the next one.